All right, we have our two speakers on stage. It's uh, Austin Bennett and Ferran Fernandez. Uh, they're going to be telling us about uh, their journey on their data pipelines from you know templated applications to more uh, you know custom code. And uh, yeah, please Thanks. go ahead, guys. All right. Hi, I'm Austin. This is Ferran. Oh. Uh, I'm glad I remembered to throw this slide in at the last minute because we're representing Chartboost, uh, or that's our employer. Seemed good to call out like, hey, why does our journey matter? It really is applicable to anyone, but um, Chartboost is an ads company, and uh, you know the tagline, uh, build your mobile business with the leading in-app monetization and programmatic advertising platform. So that's roughly what we do, chartboost.com. Um, the agenda that we're going to cover here, uh, a bit about Chartboost's initial beam usage, um, the developments with config templates, uh, some of the pros and cons that we found. Uh, we then started to do some deeper evaluations into these config templates, and then we're going to tell you about where it is that we are going. Um, I'm going to defer here to Ferran, who has done most of this work. I'm a you know, new addition to the company here. So. Thank you. OK, so let me guide you through <laughs> the whole story about <laughs> how we started using Apache Beam. Um, we first started using Apache Spark in reality, uh, and we had a pretty massive Spark monolith job that had a lot of business logic inside. It was very difficult to change and to tune. So it was pretty much like a nightmare. So three, three and a half years ago, we had the opportunity to move from AWS to GCP. And as a result of that, we also had the opportunity to go deeper into other technologies. And we found, uh, well, that Apache Beam was one of those good technologies that we could use. Uh, to replace what we had. Um, one of the main problems at the very beginning is that the SDK that we wanted to use, the Java SDK, which, which at that point was the one that had all the features we, we wanted, um, it was basically the Java SDK. <laughs> and not all the team members had the same level of confidence with Java. So that was a problem, right? Um, so in order to sort this out, uh, we came up with the idea of creating a agnostic solution that we call uh, config templates. I will show you pretty much what it is in the next diagram. So as you can see here in the center, um, we created this core, this Apache Beam core, that accepts JSON config configurations that we push. And we don't really care about anything else. So that's, that's the center. That core thing is written in Java. Uh, and we can basically plug and play different syncs and sources the way we want. And the most powerful feature is the fact that we can basically play around with how we want to parse the events and how we want to deal with them. As you can see, it accepts JSON and protobuf. Um, but you can just play around with uh, your inputs and outputs. Um, let me show you an example of how that looks in real life. I hope, hopefully this, yeah, it looks pretty decent. Okay, so here you can see a JSON event on the, on my right hand side. Uh, it's a simple JSON, it doesn't have much, um, like, I don't know, like a, you know, nested elements here and there, an array, not very complex. Uh, what's interesting here is the config template. It is not a config template, uh, but it has the m most important parameters. Uh, what this thing is doing is saying, OK, I want my JSON to be parsed in the following way. Uh, and it has a lot of built-in functions, like mapping elements. For instance, you can see that the JSON has the user attribute. And we are mapping that into a BigQuery column named uh, username. So in this case, we are basically renaming the, the sync, or like how the value is going to be stored in the final sync. Um, we also have other features implemented, like the possibility of filtering out events or a nest arrays. But the most powerful feature we have here is the fact that we can execute JavaScript functions within the Java code at runtime. So as you can see in the red squarey 
shape there at the bottom, I'm just passing a JavaScript function to transform the attributes into a lowercase. And that's basically inserted it into the Java code. And it just works out of the box. Um, so of course, as you can imagine, this helped a lot at the very beginning. Um, the fact that we could use JavaScript instead of Java made the non-Java developers more confident and also helped a lot with the speed of how we were developing things. We didn't need to, like, we didn't have the, the need of, like, going into the Java code and change anything. It was already there. The only thing we had to do is just stream the JSON, config some stuff here and there. It also helped a lot with the reusability of the code, right? Because someone else from the team can take a JSON config, change a couple things here and there, and just have it running. Like uh, the, the most common pattern we use is the Kafka to be query stream or pops up live. And that can be achieved by just changing a few lines here and there. Um, it has, I mean, so far, as you can imagine, this has a lot of like pros and cons. Some of those uh, I would like to mention here. So it's not everything ideal. Um, in, the terms of, in terms of like pros, I think I have already listed some of those. The fact that you can just basically <laughs> create your JavaScript functions, test them into your browser, put them into the config, and like have whatever transformation you want makes things easy and quick. Um, it just simplifies the development, and it's also quite flexible in the sense that you can just decide which uh, inputs and outputs you want to put. Um, but of course, it also has downsides. Um, it has limited functionality. And what I mean by that is not, like, that could be a bit contradictory with the previous slide, right? But what, I'm, what I mean here is that um, we are not, we are limited uh, to use some of the Beam features. So we are, all these transformations are applied per record. So we don't have session windows. We don't have group buys, right? Whatever, all that, it's basically another piece of Beam that we are not using here, but that we might be interested on, on using. So it also has some limitations, maybe, in terms of how much you can uh, adapt things within the, within the, template ecosystem. So let's say that in a month from now, someone comes and say, hey, let's use Pulsar. Why not, right? Um, we don't have that implemented here in the template. So it would require to just come and implement that. And the final goal for this is not to create a wrapper on top of Beam or something. It's just to kind of like have a functionality for the developers to iterate quick. Um, so with the whole JavaScript thing in place, uh, we started wondering if what we had was good enough in terms of performance, right? Because executing JavaScript inside Java might lead into some performance questions, like is it efficient enough? Uh, is what we have good for, for our purposes? So we came up with a set of experiments uh, and metrics to evaluate that. Um, I'm just listing the three experiments with it. Um, basically, as you can see, we uh, decided to just do some basic mapping. So as I was showing in the example before, maybe uh, like mapping some attributes from a JSON to some BigQuery column, that would be pretty immediate. Then we decided to do the same with simple JavaScript. And what I mean by that is that maybe some functions that are already in vanilla JavaScript, like to lowercase, uh, drop the first and the last character of this string, that kind of stuff. And then we dealt with more complex data type transformations in JavaScript, like arrays or nested JSONs. And we did the comparison with like, the same implementations in Java. Um, in order to extract those metrics, uh, we are on GCP. So we, the, our runner for our Beam code is uh, Dataflow. And we used MQL. I just pasted a link of a pretty useful blog post we found that was quite important for us to extract those metrics from, from Dataflow using the monitoring query language. I, I'm not going to go too deep into uh, the benchmarking topic or how to extract metrics here. I think there is a good uh, presentation during this summit about it. Um, but basically, the way this thing works is that it just uh, reads data from the monitoring Dataflow 
and write into BigQuery so we can explode this data afterwards. And the results we got uh, were this. This is a CPU comparison uh, f uh, of what we have, like the templates versus pure Java. As you can see, the, the numbers are here and there. But basically, uh, there is a, in approximately an 18 to 20% CPU reduction using Java rather than using the uh, JavaScript templates we, we have. So, well, with all that in mind, of course, uh, and I'm not saying that what we have is, is bad or anything. I mean, this, is, this thing was processing more than 1 million events per second in a, content, in a constant flow. Um, we, we don't plan to keep extending the functionality, as I was saying, but we do want to uh, like use more of the Beam capabilities, and that's why we decided to transition to write uh, Beam code instead of like depending so much on the uh, config templates, because that would help a lot with the flexibility of the pipelines. It will improve the performance and scalability, and of course, it will allow us to have this kind of enhancement uh, that we are looking for, like in terms of doing more complex stuff and some tackle more complex business cases that at the moment we cannot do. So let me jump to Austin so he can talk about the changes that are on the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. Uh, oh, okay, so we're, uh, yeah, again, uh, different um, use cases, et cetera. Um, nothing wrong with the using templates. We'll get into some more of that as well. But um, we were thinking that, um, for instance, we were limited uh, currently to per record operations. Um, there's uh, reasons we would want to use some more specific beam functionality continuing to uh, expand the um, private in a, you know internal code base which just means more code we have to maintain is non-desirable um, uh, related to templates um, that's a link which is not particularly useful for this presentation but if you find the slides um, there was a nice uh, I want to say in March, maybe a nice mailing list thread on a declarative API for Beam that started to talk about uh, what a Beam based template solution may look like. That would be a nice, um, you know, way to get the easy to develop functionality, um, but it would be vastly preferable. I think Charboost, for instance, would be thrilled to contribute, but, you know, not having that be a community asset, not a private one, uh, would be desirable. Um, Another um, just point worth uh, calling out, people were using Beam by way of the templates, uh, but hadn't uh, a strong sense of the Beam primitives. Um, we've now gotten that experience and um, you know, I believe look forward to continuing to uh, expand our usage. Um, also want to call out, kind of as I said, um, the B point, which is, hey, let's, you know, having less private code is awesome, right? I don't, let's not maintain too much extra stuff. And um, we've been pushing to uh, work with our data producers to have more and more protobuf messages for, you know, the numerous benefits uh, as well, which is, you know, just worth kind of calling out as a future state. Um, calling out again, config templates have a ton of positives. Um, we're able to, as, uh, trying to think who our keynote this morning talking about that elusive business value, right? Uh, able to get a lot done without, uh, without investing a ton of engineering resources in them. Um, same point again, let's get this maybe as something in Beam. Um, the Beam learning curve was intimidating to engineers. Uh, in practice, it was very uh, straightforward through our uh, engineers actually uh, digging in, so I'm hoping that serves as a uh, encouragement to those of you kind of wondering, is this uh, too hard? Um, in practice, it doesn't seem like it is. Um, 
and uh, Chartboost has a uh, decent scale, so uh, the investment of engineering resources, especially for performance gains, has a monetary impact. Uh, so uh, besides the increased flexibility of things that we can uh, produce, um, you know, saving some money is a nice thing. So um, getting us to the foundational primitives so that we can uh, do whatever we need. Um, worth calling out, um, we started doing some benchmarks. I look forward to checking out this uh, talk because you know, it was like, hey, we're kind of figuring out how to do this. And then once we were reviewing talks, I was like, you know what? I don't really want to figure this out. I want to attend this guy's talk and, uh, and let him uh, give us some tips on uh, digging into that. Um, I guess that's a note for when this is a uh, slide or maybe watched on YouTube. Let's, you know, throw a link to cross-reference that and want to call out um, tonight there's a community discussion. Um, check out that bit.ly, for instance, if you want to submit some uh, things that you think are worth um, exploring as a community and extension. That's run by Alex there. Uh, in Horizon, which maybe is this room uh, in a while. Uh, and yeah, Charpoose is hiring. Um, <laughs> it's worth, <laughs> worth calling out as well. Check us out. Um, we have, uh, I think, s what do we got? Two, four, six of us here. Um, so even if not about jobs, we're happy to chat about all of our experiences. And um, we got a few minutes for questions, it looks like. Yep.